Hi everyone, my name is Alina Dima and I'm a senior developer advocate for IoT at AWS. If you are using AWS IoT course rules engine and are experiencing difficulties creating, testing and validating rule SQL statements and payload transformations, then this video is for you. I will talk you through the usage of a tool I created in order to easily validate AWS IoT rules SQL statements. So the rules engine is allowing engineers to filter, decode, and process IoT device data and route this data to 15 plus AWS and third-party systems and services. Rules Engine currently has support for over 70 distinct SQL functions, which can be used in select and where clauses, also 14 distinct operators, all JSON data types, specifying literal objects in select and where clauses, case statements, uh, JSON extensions, substitution templates, and nested object queries. In order to validate the SQL statements and, uh, and their syntax and the input and output expectations, normally developers would have to do quite a lot of work, right? So they would have to create a rule. They would have to create and assign the actions to the rule, create and assign an IAM role with valid permissions for the actions. Then they would have to simulate a bit of a test environment, meaning subscribe to the output topic or monitor the output system, then publish an MQTT message to check that the rule is working. If the rule execution does not work, then they would have to look in Amazon CloudWatch logs uh, or the downstream service log and see what went wrong. Um, and if, of course, the logs are not enabled, then they would have to enable the logs and try everything again. And of course, if you're doing this, um, you can do this via the AWS IoT console, or you can do this with the CLI, or you can do this, uh, you know, in your code. But in any case, it is quite a lot of steps that you would have to actually do just to validate your SQL statement rule. And because of, uh, because of this heavy lifting, what I did is create a tool that basically helps engineers accelerate this journey so it makes the developer experience better. So what does this tool do? Well, first of all, it encapsulates the complexities of creating, configuring, cleaning up AWS resources needed to create, run, and validate an IoT SQL uh, statement and the payload transformations. It also enables fiction-free validation of rule syntax and payload transformations without the need for developers to actually set up the entire infrastructure. This tool additionally provides an easily extensible library of sample SQL statements, and we're going to look at them um, in a moment when we switch to the IDE. So what this sample library is, is a bunch of working examples where you can see valid input payloads and expected outputs, and you can also see useful examples of SQL statements which work. So with the sample library, the idea is that you would look at what works and then modify these examples to fit your use cases. Of course, you can also build from scratch quite easily new test cases. So now let's see how this tool actually works. So you can imagine that this tool is working like an integration test suite where you need to define just the inputs, the configuration and expected outputs. So you can see on the diagram that, um, you know, what needs to be defined and what needs to be created is, is marked in yellow, whereby what the tool actually does for you, so the heavy lifting is marked in gray. The inputs are provided as a new JSON file and they are also referred to as creating a new test case or validation scenario. We are going to look in the IDE a little later as to how to do this. The integration test itself, which contains the setup, execution, assertions, expectations, and teardown, uh, which are marked in gray on the diagram, are already part of the tool. I mean, of course, if you discover that you need to implement extra features and uh, you know different behavior than the one that the tool provides by default, then you can definitely build in your own code uh, and create another test suite or um, you know, extend the existing behavior as well to fit your use case. In the next minutes, I'm going to show you how to use this tool and how to extend this for your own validation scenario. So now we're gonna use, we're gonna switch to the IDE and we're gonna see this tool in action. The tool is written in JavaScript and it uses the Jest testing framework. The Jest configuration is located in the Jest config file. You will, under normal circumstances, not have to modify anything in this file unless you want to uh, amend uh, the Jest timeout. So to amend the Jest timeout, you can either increase it or decrease it. Normally, you would only increase it if you're trying to run a lot of different scenarios uh, together as part of the same test suite. So if we look at the directory structure, we see that we actually have two directories. One of them is called util, and this is the directory uh, that contains the files responsible for creating the tools environment. So under normal circumstances, you will not have to overwrite 
or recreate or modify any of these files, uh, except for some minor changes to the configuration. The other directory is called validation. So this is where the test um, executions, that, so, so the, the file that, uh, that describes the test um, is located. Again, under normal circumstances, uh, you will uh, use an npm um, run command to actually run uh, this, th this test class, but you're not going to have to modify it um, unless there is a special circumstance in which you have to do this. The other directory is the sample library of, of examples that I was talking about uh, in, the previous, uh, uh, in the previous slide. So here you see a library of uh, validation scenarios that are already created that go through a couple, a couple of common examples of payload transformations that you can do with the rules engine. So here is an example that we can look at. For example, this is um, you know taking a test payload composed of a JSON object uh, with a key and an array and is um, testing or validating an SQL statement that selects all the values under the key messages uh, from the topic. So the expected uh, result of this is that uh, just this part is going to be returned. So just the array is going to be uh, to be returned uh, as the payload transformation performed by the rule SQL statement. So now let's look at how you can um, actually run one of these examples. So first of all, um, in order to run one of these examples, the first thing you need to do is figure out which of the of the samples you want to run. So here you can only you can either run just one of the samples, or you can just specify all, um, which means that it will go through the entire library uh, of different validation scenarios and execute them one by one. Um, so the mechanism to run this is very well described um, in the in the git readme file. So you would have to run npm run test. Um, and this would run the default um, as configured here. So it's going to run the default input file. However, if you want to run all, you, you can specify input file equals all. If you specify nothing, it's going to run the default. But you can also specify one particular input file, uh, which is a, a, an existing and a newly created input file or a newly created input file. Uh, before we actually, I actually show you how to create a new testing and validation scenario, let's try to execute one of the existing ones. So uh, we can take the one that is actually configured here as, uh, as a default, um, and uh, you know, we, can, we can run this one. Do not forget before running this that you would need to uh, put your correct account ID uh, in the configuration file. Like I said earlier, in order to run one of the, uh, the default test, test, test scenario, we're going to do npm run test. So this is going to test to run the test for the default. So we can now see that this uh, particular validation scenario was successful. Um, so here there are login statements uh, inside the framework itself, which show you exactly what the framework is doing, how it's establishing the MQTT connection, how it's creating the rule, um, starting the MQTT client, um, and so on. So um, this is important, of course, if something go wrong, goes wrong, that you have the ability in the framework to actually see what went wrong. Uh, another thing that I would like to mention before I show you how to create a new uh, a new scenario uh, is the fact that uh, you can see here that there are uh, some retries. So um, the reason, so every part of the validation framework that makes an API call uh, to AWS IoT uh, is surrounded by retries. So this is in the case that you have a lot of execution scenarios running. Um, you know just runs them in parallel so you can run into situations where uh, the limit uh, the TPS limit uh, of the AWS IoT um, endpoint is is reached in case this happens then uh, you know this is uh, you know the, the the retry functionality is kicking in um, and it is configured to retry uh, at least three times of course you can you can make you can increase this retry if you need to but um, this should not be this should not be necessary so because you, uh, this execution um, was successful, you see here that the input payload and the, the expected payload are both correct. So now let's try to go to this test scenario and um, let's, uh, let's modify uh, and, and, and see how a failure looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to go in here and modify the expected output to a value that is incorrect. And then I'm going to run the tests again. So if we look at the output right now, we see that it was actually a test failure 
Um, so we see that uh, that the expected value was new light 6.0, but we have actually received, so the actual value is 5.0, uh, which is of course correct. And this is happening just because we have um, literally broken the scenario ourselves. But what's interesting here is to see that if um, a validation scenario fails, then you see, um, first of all, the test that failed, so the, the validation um, scenario that failed, and you also see the expected value and the received value. So then you can look at both of them, look at your SQL um, statement, and um, immediately you would understand uh, what it actually evaluated to, which is quite important. So now let's see how you can create uh, a new testing scenario. So first of all, uh, the only thing that you need to do when you want to create a new testing scenario is create a new file, just like this one, containing uh, a JSON object uh, with at least the mandatory fields. So in order to figure out what, manda what the mandatory fields are, you can look inside the input JSON schema. So this JSON schema describes all the fields that are needed. So so you, need, you, you can provide an SQL version, but it actually defaults to the latest version if you're not providing it. You have to, you have to provide um, the MQTT topic, you have to provide the input payload, you have to provide the input SQL as well as the expected output. So you see here in the, in the JSON schema that these are the required fields. So you would create a new JSON file. So let us do this. So you can now see that I have created a new file, which is called payload enrichment with functions. Um, and this file needs to be created in the validation data. Um, if you look here, there is an SQL statement and then an MQTT topic, uh, an input payload, input SQL and expected out output. So what we actually want to validate is the SQL statement here. So we're trying to use SQL functions like topic um, and uh, we're trying to extract from the MQTT topic itself, certain values and augment or enrich the payload with those values. So we're gonna add topic of one as device ID, topic of two as actuator ID, and topic of three as command to the entire initially provided payload. And what we're expecting as an output is something that looks like this, provided that the topic that the device is actually publishing the data on is this topic. So now, uh, the next step is to actually test this um, new validation scenario. So now I'm going to show you how. So the first thing that you're going to need to do in order to test the scenario is go to the configuration file and you can change uh, the default to the new scenario. So this is called payload enrichment with functions. And again, do not forget to uh, add your account ID to make sure that your account ID is correct. So after you added uh, the needed file name in the configuration, then you don't need to do anything else but run the same commands again. And this time, this is going to run your newly created test. So let's see. So now the test is executed and we, we, we can see that actually the test succeeded, right? So we see that the correct um, execution was run. So the, this is your new, this is our new test case. And we actually see that the validation was successful. So with this tool, you can actually test and validate SQL statements without needing to even log into the AWS IoT console or write any of the AWS IoT API calls yourself because the framework does it for you. So the only thing that you actually need to do is add your test scenario inside the uh, validation data and then based on how you want to execute it, so you can execute it with the command minus 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 input file and add your file name, or you can run it uh, just with npm run test, assuming that you have added the default test in the configuration, or you can run all the tests using input file all um, as, as a command. And of course, don't forget to have a look at the, at the input JSON schema in order to look at the mandatory fields. So yeah. This is all that you have to do. Pretty simple, right? If you want to contribute to uh, this library of, uh, of SQL statements, feel free to add your examples and your samples uh, to this validation data directory or folder. And you can then afterwards make uh, create, a, uh, create a pull request or uh, you can uh, open an issue in GitHub or you can connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Before we conclude this video, I would like to share with you uh, some resources that can be useful in order to understand how to work with this tool better. So first of all, the tool is available on GitHub 
uh, in the AWS IoT Builder Tools organization, and it is called Validation Tool for AWS IoT Rules. So you can clone this repository and work with the tool in a similar way like I have described in this video. I have also created a dev.2 blog post that describes all the steps that I have also covered in this video and a little bit more around the reasoning and around the architecture of the tool. So also have a look um, at, uh, at the dev.2 blog. Thank you very much for your attention. This has been all for this video. My name is Alina Dima and I'm a senior developer advocate for IoT at AWS. If you would like to contribute to this tool uh, or you have any questions or remarks, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn and on Twitter. If you scan the QR code on the screen, uh, it will point you to, first of all, my contact details, and second of all, some more material uh, that you can find useful in your day-to-day -day, uh, activities with IoT and AWS IoT. So happy building. Thank you very much for your attention and have a nice rest of your day.